just bought myself some stock in uh, GameStop. But uh, nobody told me, you're not really supposed to do that. You're supposed to buy low, sell high. Wish somebody would have told me that. I think I made a mistake. It is January 27. This is your AEW Dynamite Review for Wednesday. The uh, final Dynamite, in fact, of the month of January. I am the Solemn Oster. Thank you for choosing me for your Dynamite coverage. Casey is raw. I saw him uh, pop up in the chat. What's going on, Casey? And everybody else dropping Super Chats. I hope you guys can hear me. Everything looks good, sounds good. My uh, YouTube TV did not look so good a little bit earlier. I missed the very beginning of the show. I got a black screen. Actually, when Eddie Kingston was coming out for his entrance, it looked like he was turning into a Transformer. And then I just got a black screen for the next probably 15 minutes before it finally uh, came back on. So that wasn't too much fun, but I did end up seeing uh, pretty much everything else. A much more enjoyable show this week than last week. Uh, I was not a fan of last week's show. A couple of things I liked, but thought it was a bad dynamite. So this was a nice rebound this week. I very much enjoyed this show on the whole. Hope you guys did too. Super Chats are open. As you see, they will be uh, popping up on your screen, and I will read each and every single one of them. And I also want to let you guys know about a couple of fun things going on this week. Uh, as we are heading into the Royal Rumble, so we are going to just briefly uh, touch on this. I want to make sure that you guys are aware uh, that there are two different contests going on this week that you can still get in on right now, including that one right there, WrestleRumble.com. There is a Rumble Pick'em contest where the winner, first place winner, will walk away with $1,000 cold, hard cash. Second place wins an NWO replica belt. Third place wins a white winged eagle replica. You know how a pick'em contest works. You have to answer a whole series of questions. Who do you think is going to win the rumble? Who's going to be the last person eliminated? You go, you go down the whole list. Just buy an entry and you can win a thousand bucks. It's not a bad deal. I'd get in on that contest myself, but I don't think that would uh, be very fair. I also want you guys to participate in this, the Macho Man Dig It contest. One dollar to enter. We're going to have three winners. First place winner walks away with a Macho Man Legacy Championship. Second place, Undertaker, Signature Series title. Third place winner gets a mystery belt. And the uh, cutoff for, and there's that super chat. Cutoff for entries is 7 p.m. on Sunday, so you guys got right up until the very beginning of the pay-per-view to get in on that. So I hope that you will uh, take part in that contest. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know what else is going to be a lot of fun? Sunday night, the Royal Rumble Review. I'm going to be live with you as soon as the Royal Rumble goes off the air. Whatever time that may be, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., who the hell knows. And uh, one of the fun things we'll be doing on the stream is I will get to host. As I do every single month, I will have the opportunity to host the actual giveaway for the Dig It contest. So join me on Sunday night. I'm also going to be going live tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern. I think I'm going to do it at 9 o'clock. I'm going to do Royal Rumble predictions here on YouTube tomorrow night. So come on back here. 24 hours. What is it? Less than 24 hours. I'll be live on YouTube yet again. Yeah, I forgot to post a question in the chat a little while ago. I wanted to get you guys uh, going. What did you think? What did you think of the show tonight? I, want, I wanted to ask everybody before I went live in the chat, what did you, you think of uh, Dynamite tonight? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave those comments as we go along. Now, Eddie Kingston against Lance Archer was the opener tonight. I was actually looking forward to this match. It's been uh, building nicely over the last several weeks. And nice to see Archer getting some in-ring time since he doesn't really get a whole lot of air time in the ring on Dynamite. And as Eddie Kingston is coming out, like I said, my connection crapped out. Apparently, this was a widespread problem uh, on YouTube TV. But other people said they were having the same issue on Hulu and, and some of the other services as well. So I don't think it was just a YouTube TV issue. Uh, other people who have 
uh, Comcast and, and Verizon Fios said that they didn't have any issues. So, unfortunately, I was hit by an issue. Once my connection was finally restored, I thought this was kind of amusing. So I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, am I even going to be able to do a stream tonight? All of a sudden, it is restored, and I see John Moxley. And John Moxley looks like he's in a lot somewhere. I don't know where he is. And it comes back on right in the middle of this promo where Moxley is talking about how he's just a simple guy. And he goes through all of these things with his simple life. He likes his beer cold. I mean, who, who among us doesn't, right? Who wants to drink piss warm beer? So he, he likes his beer cold. He likes his coffee hot. Says he likes his water at room temperature. And he volunteered something else. He said he likes to have sex in the morning because it's a good way to start the day. The man has a point. The man has a point. Next week at Beach Break, it's going to be Moxley, Pac, and Phoenix against Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. He was hyping up that match. I thought it was a good promo with some good life advice. You have sex in the morning and, uh, you know, you get your day started in a positive way. Who doesn't want to start their day off on a positive note? It doesn't matter who you're having sex with. You could be having sex with a total stranger. You could be having sex with yourself. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's a great way to start the day. Get going, right? Tackle the day with positive attitude. So I didn't see the match with Archer and Kingston. I, I read about what happened. I went back to see what happened. Archer had the EBD claw applied. Uh, Butcher and Blade, they dragged out Jake the Snake Roberts. He was, he looked half dead. Archer is distracted. The bunny hands off a foreign object to Eddie Kingston. I don't know if it was brass knucks or or some kind of wrap that goes around the hand that that like like a loaded glove type gimmick. I didn't see it. Uh but he did connect with a spinning back fist for the win. So Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston pins Lance Archer. I was surprised uh to find out about that being the finish. I I did not expect that to be the way the match was going to end. Uh but keeps the program going. Keeps the program going at least through one more match between those two guys. Uh, unfortunately, I can't comment on the match itself because I didn't I didn't see it. But Butcher and Blade uh, hit their tag team finisher on Archer after the match. And Kingston hit a second spinning back fist. So Eddie Kingston getting one over on Lance Archer here on the show tonight. Ken terminated. Derek Rose. Khalid Adam joining us as he does every week in the chat. Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys got your day started in a positive way. I did not. I can tell you that. I did not. At least not the way John Moxley does. Sting and Darby Allen. We go from the Moxley promo to Sting and Darby Allen. They're from Parts Unknown. I don't know where they were. They were addressing... Team Taz ahead of their street fight, which is now confirmed for Revolution coming up on March 7th. That is the new date for Revolution, by the way. They have bumped it back by a week. Apparently, they did not want to run opposite the Canelo Alvarez fight. So this is going to be a rare Sunday night pay-per-view. Uh, I don't see them doing Sunday night pay-per-views going forward. I think it's just a one-time thing. Tony Khan has talked before about not wanting to go head-to-head -head with the NFL because he owns... You know, his family owns an NHL franchise. He's not going to compete with the, N with the NFL. So March 7th is the date of revolution. You know, one thing I liked about, there were two or three promos on the show tonight. The Moxley one, this one here. Uh, there might have been one more. One thing I liked about it is the fact, oh, Pac. Pac was another one. And Pac was not on the show tonight. He was not at Daly's place. He had uh, done a tape promo from somewhere. I like that each of these promos had their own unique setting. They were not taped in the back. They were not taped in a dressing room. They were not in the ring. Moxley, like I said, he was outdoors. He may have filmed this out where he lived in Nevada. I don't know. I mean, it was shot professionally, so maybe they did it in Florida. Uh, but he was out in a lot somewhere. Sting and Darby looked like here they were in an abandoned warehouse. I like that. I like changing the settings up when it comes to these promos. But Sting... 
actually did more talking in this segment than maybe he has in uh, any segment in weeks, said that he was hurt by Taz calling him a hoodlum. They called Sting and Darby hoodlums. He was very hurt by this. He says, Darby, though, Darby is a hoodlum. And Darby didn't seem offended by this. He said, it doesn't matter how dirty you play in the streets because it's all about survival. And he took his skateboard and he chucked it through the window, one of the windows behind him. And Sting then took his baseball bat and he started bashing out some of the windows with his bat. And all I'm thinking is, I hope his eyes are closed. Keep your eyes closed. Let's not have any shards of glass come back in your face. What, we've seen wrestlers before fucking around with glass and sometimes it doesn't end too well. This, by the way, was a taped show. I don't believe this was live tonight. Pretty sure this was taped uh, last week. For what this was, this was fine. Uh, again, I like the setting. And look, they've got time to kill because this match is over a month away. So if Sting is not going to be able to really get physical, they're going to have to come up with creative ways to keep people's interest up for the match. And promos are going to be one way to go about doing that. We saw a lot of that with Moxley and Kenny Omega leading up to their match, the Winter is Coming show. Uh, they have a lot of time. They have about five or six weeks before they get to Revolution now that it's been pushed back. Uh, I thought this was good. We had Chris Jericho and MJF against the Varsity Blondes. That's a good point. You know, powerful one in the chat mentioned, and that's who I was thinking about, Bill Goldberg. I'm going to have a lot to say about Bill Goldberg and my Royal Rumble predictions tomorrow. Not necessarily all positive. But Bill Goldberg almost lost his arm doing some really stupid shit with a limousine window many years ago on WCW television. You don't want to fuck around. Two things you don't want to fuck around with are glass and fire. Just ask Randy Orton. He got sunburned by Alexa Bliss on, on Raw a couple of weeks ago. Right, We got Lucha Orton, and we saw him unmasked on Raw Monday night. He had sunburns all over his face. He looked like he was out tanning, and he fell asleep. Got to be careful. The sun will get you. Remember, there's a hole in the ozone layer. You can never be too careful. SPF 100, that's what I use. I use the strong stuff. I'm very fair-skinned. I don't tan. I turn, into, I turn into a tomato. If I stay outside for too long, it's not a good look. If I have, you know, in the summertime, if I happen to be outside and I get really burned, you're going to see me coming on one of these reviews. I'm going to turn my camera to black and white. So that way you can see. <laughs> because when I get red, I get, I mean, it's, let me tell you, it is not fun. We had Jericho and MJF against the Varsity Blondes. MJF, before the match, said that he needed to talk to Sammy Guevara after the match. He seemed a little perturbed by something. He felt he had to have a face-to-face -face with Sammy. Nobody really knew what it was about. So then he's talking about Griff Garrison. And he asked him to just go ahead and say, I quit. Let's just make this easy. Just go ahead and say, I quit. And Garrison hit him and MJF escaped and grabbed the chair. Meanwhile, Sammy Guevara's outside. He's clapping. He's applauding this. Sammy Guevara does not like MJF. Does not like him. He doesn't trust him. Doesn't want to have anything to do with him. He seems to be the only one in the inner circle with a brain. So they go to break. They come back. Brian Pillman Jr., he's making a comeback. Hits a big crossbody. Hot tag to Griff Garrison. Garrison. Garrison looked really good here. He was running wild for a little bit. He got a near fall on MJF. Pillman tagged in, hit a missile drop kick. He went for some kind of springboard move off the rope. And as he's coming through the air, Chris Jericho connects all the way down uh, with a Judas effect, knocks him out. Now, he could have won the match right then and there, but Jericho decided he was going to hit one more move. What was that move? Jericho had to hit the lion salt off the ropes. And after he connected with the lion salt, he gazed into the camera as if to say fuck you to all the people who criticized him last week for botching the lion salt hey he hit the move how about that good for him see i'm happy i'm giving him a seal clap good for chris now do it again like a dog next week go ahead and do it again i apologize for nothing the guy landed on his fucking face last week 
This is not the Chris Jericho of uh, 10 years ago. I wouldn't use the lion's salt in every single match. That was my critique. But hey, he hit the move okay this week. I'm proud of him. Thumbs up to Chris. Thumbs up to Chris. We'll give him a gold star. So after the match was over, MJF and Sammy, they were exchanging words. We will we'll come back to this a little bit later. There was one more segment. I thought the Varsity Blondes uh, looked really good here. I thought MJF and Jericho gave him a lot. Uh, Garrison in particular. We, we've seen Pillman shine here and there on TV over the weeks. But Garrison, I thought, looked really good here in this match. And I, I think they're coming along nicely as a team. So I like this. Chris Quillman in the chat. Steeler Nation. Actually, you know what? Let's, um, let me just tackle some of these uh, Super Chats because I think some people were letting me know what they thought of the show tonight. Let's, let's uh, see what you guys are saying. Let's see what you guys are saying. I can't bring up the Super Chats the uh, usual way because it's not updating, so I have to read them directly through YouTube. But Ryan Spy said the mention of Speedball Mike Bailey in the main event popped me. I can't wait until he can return to the States. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be a few more years, isn't it? I mean, I, I thought it was a, a long, extended kind of ban. Is it a ban? Or he's not able to travel, I think, to this country. But I think it's going to be a while before he's able to come back. That, that's rough. I mean, that really... I don't want to say killed his career, but it really just completely stalled his career. And I think it's going to be a while before he's able to come back into this country. I mean, I haven't heard any new updates on him if things have changed as far as his situation is concerned. But uh, was I think it was a visa issue or so something like that. And uh, EJ, I missed the last half of the show because the fire alarm went off in my building. And apparently it was a drill. So that is how my night is going and uh, Patrice keep up the good work and Alex Alex Jimenez thank you for the 15 bucks I was at last week's show had a blast now I am home since my co-worker gave me COVID oh says no symptoms though well hopefully it stays that way that sucks fuck that co-worker let's talk about Cody Rhodes Cody Rhodes was out remember Last week, he said, Cody, this week is going to respond to Shaq. And I said, respond to what? The last time we saw Shaq on Dynamite, he seemed pretty complimentary and apologetic and said he was just having some fun. Then Brandy threw water in his face. And that was weeks ago. That had to be at least a month ago. But they said Cody would respond to Shaquille O'Neal. Tony Schiavone gets in the ring conduct the interview. Tony looked like he was freezing his ass off. You could see it was windy in Jacksonville, and Tony just looked like he would just rather be anywhere but in the middle of that ring. He needed some hot cocoa. He needed a down jacket. He looked very, very cold. But Cody was out to respond to Shaq. Shaq taped a promo that aired earlier today during the AEW Dynamite Awards. Now, the Dynamite Awards... Uh, is something that aired on the Bleacher Report app. I don't know if it's on YouTube as well. And it's it's kind of like their Slammy Awards. They just announced a whole bunch of categories and different awards, and who gives a shit? But Shaq, from what looked like the set of NBA on TNT, they had him tape a little, a little intro into one of the last categories. I think it was the uh, pay-per-view moment of the year, which was won by the Stadium Stampede. But before they went into the nominees and the winner, Shaq said he had a message. He took the next 30 seconds to deliver a message to Cody Rhodes. And Shaq's demeanor has changed from the last time we saw him. Now he's calling Cody a punk. He didn't have the balls to say that in front of Cody's wife. Maybe Shaq was afraid of Brandy. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe Shaq was too afraid to speak his mind in front of Cody's wife. Maybe Shaq had no balls. And he was afraid to say anything negative about Cody in front of his wife. But now he has no issue anymore doing that. Called him a punk. Said he looks like a girl with his blonde hair. I take great offense to that, okay? Shaq. So he said that if Cody wants a battle, all he has to do is name the place. 
Name the time and the place. He goes and he'll be there. He said, better yet, let's do it in March. And March just so happens to be the new date of their next pay-per-view. So Shivani asked Cody about what he has to say to Shaq and to Jade Cargill. And Cody said, you know, I heard the challenge and I'd love to just come out here and promote a match for March 7th at Revolution. And he said, I can't do that because Cody and Brandy are having a baby. Brandy is having their child. So he can't do that. He said, though, I'm going to defer the decision on what I should do to my coach, Arn Anderson. Cody cannot make a decision unless he confers with Arn Anderson. I wonder if Arn Anderson stands there and, hold, and holds it when he has to go to the bathroom. Maybe he holds it for him. Apparently, Arn Anderson is making all the decisions for Cody Rhodes. So Arn takes the microphone and he says, you're about to be a dad. It's the most important thing in your entire life. It changes your whole life said, uh, does the date June 29th, 1985 mean anything to you? Does that date have any significance to you? And he explained that he saw Cody's dad at the LA Forum on that date crawl into the ring against Tully Blanchard and then leave and get on a flight cross-country to see the birth of his son, Cody. Of course, he was talking about Dusty. We got a Dusty Chan. There were tears in Cody's eye. I mean, anytime you talk about Dusty in front of Cody, or Cody is talking about Dusty, he gets very emotional. Arn said that if he should decide to fight in March, he should do it with no regrets. And out comes Red Velvet. Red Velvet comes to the ring. She's had her issues with Jade Cargill in recent weeks. And Velvet takes the mic and says that she's sick and tired of getting attacked. She's fed up with it. She's fed up with watching Brandy get disrespected. Cody would never lay a hand on Jade Cargill, but I will. He says that she would because she's red velvet and she's about to stir her bitch ass up. And she did the whole stirring motion. Angelo Dawkins, that was his whole gimmick in NXT. He would come out, he would do the whole... The whole, the whole stirring, I don't know, he, I used to call him the baker, because it looked like he was coming out like he was baking a cake or something, I didn't know what that meant. I think it's some, something they do, I think, in the NBA, or some player does it, I, I don't know. Maybe it's from a song. But she had a lot of conviction in her voice, I mean, look, as brief as it was, I thought Red Velvet came out, and, you know, she cut a hell of a promo. It's her first chance to really get promo time on Dynamite. Usually she's on Dark, or she's in a minor segment. So it looks like Red Velvet is basically going to get the Brandy Rhodes spot, and we're going to get a tag team match of Revolution on March 7th. Cody and Red Velvet against Shaquille O'Neal and Jade Cargill. It appears that that is the match that we are going to get. If Shaq is going to wrestle, a tag team match is the way to go. Cody one-on-one, -on -one, especially the size difference. Cody... Look, years ago when they were trying to put together Shaq and the Big Show, Shaq was already retired by that point, but he was also 10 years younger. He was 10, 11 years younger then than he is today. But at least Shaq and Big Show, that's a big man. That's a hoss fight, right? Shaq and Big Show, they're both seven feet tall. They're both giants. They're both giant men, giant human beings. Shaq and Cody, it's a total mismatch. And Shaq is older and slower and not a wrestler. So a Cody in a Shaq match is a total freak show attraction. You could do it, and you might even get, you might get eyeballs on the product. I mean, are people going to pay 50 or $60 on pay-per-view to see it? I don't know about that. But doing a tag team match where Shaq doesn't have to do everything? Now, Jade Cargill doesn't exactly have a lot of experience either. So to say that, well, Jade will take most of the match... That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to end up being a better match. We still haven't really seen much of Jade. I haven't seen her at all in the ring. I, I have no idea what to expect in the ring from Jade Cargill. She looks in incredible shape physically, right? She, she takes care of herself. She's clearly a, a great athlete. 
but I have no idea what to expect from her as a wrestler. So you're going to have two people on the same team who don't exactly have a lot of in-ring experience. It's all about the attraction. That's, that's all it is. And one way to look at it, I guess, Red Velvet and Jade, if they're going to really put their effort behind Jade going forward, it's a great spot for them because this match is going to get some attention and they're going to be right in the middle of it. This is gonna, Red Velvet's about to get the biggest push of her career. Now, it may only be for one match, and the only reason she's in this spot is because Brandy is having a kid. But it's still a big spot for her to be in. One thing to keep an eye on, this was pointed out to me, the NBA uh, was not going to have an All-Star game this year. I guess they were going to skip it. And now I'm seeing that they may have one after all. And if they do have an All-Star game, the date that they're looking at for the All-Star game in Atlanta, March 7th. So if that happens, the question becomes, how does that affect Shaq's participation in this? Because if you're going to have the All-Star game on March 7th, Shaq is obviously a big part of of the TNT coverage of the NBA. It could impact this match. I'm just seeing this a little bit earlier. Nothing is confirmed, but apparently these are the discussions that are going on. So I don't know if they were aware of that before they made this announcement, but that could have an impact potentially on this match. So that that's something to uh, possibly keep an eye on. To all the uh, NBA fans. Now Jose in the chat says Jade stinks at everything. What, what do you base that on? If, if there's matches of hers, I'd love to take a look at it and see, because I have no idea what to expect from this woman in the ring. She may go in there and impress me. She may go in there and be a China type because she is bigger. She can just bounce people around. I don't expect to see her in there doing chain wrestling, although that would impress the hell out of me if she did. She can go in there and absolutely stink out the joint. I am I'm kind of morbidly curious what to expect from this woman in the ring. I don't really have anything to base it on. Hangman Page against the Hollywood hunk, he calls himself, Ryan Nemeth, in Nemeth's Dynamite debut. Ryan is the younger brother, in case you couldn't see it. I mean, it was obvious. He's the younger brother of Dolph Ziggler. I'm sure was watching his little brother tonight. You know, they they were uh, shooting him from behind, and he was doing that, like, hip wiggle that Dolph does. And if I didn't know any better, I mean, his hair is a little bit shorter, but... I would have thought it was Dolph. They they do definitely look related. Uh, he wrestled in NXT for a while. I think before this past week, uh, when they did these tapings, I don't think he had wrestled in over two years. So he's had a long layoff. He hasn't really been active. These are his first matches back. And, you know, I thought that uh, he didn't look too bad. Didn't really stand out much to me, but didn't look bad. Matt Hardy was at ringside doing some scouting. We just didn't know for who. At first, I thought it was for for Nemeth. I thought maybe he he got signed. Maybe they're going to put him with Private Party and Matt's going to start his own faction. We found out at the end, though, uh, either he wasn't scouting him at all or he was, but he was not impressed uh, so much by him as much as he was by his opponent. Uh, Nemeth hit a neckbreaker, only got a one count. Hangman fired out of the corner with a lariat. Took him down with a spine buster. And uh, he won it with a discus forearm in the buckshot lariat. Tony Schiavone came down. Looking very uh, looking very frigid in Jacksonville. He comes down to the ring after the match. He's going to interview Hangman. He's going to interview Matt Hardy. And Hardy said that Hangman seems lost. He knows how much love Paige had for Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Says that uh, he doesn't want anything from him doesn't want anything from Hangman. He says, I want you to know that you're a good person. You deserve to be happy. And he offered Paige a spot in his dressing room to dress if he wants to take it. Tony Schiavone seemed to think that he should. I don't know why Tony decided to chime in with his opinion. Who gives a shit? (laughs) But Tony was like, I think you should take the offer. And Matt Hardy with that, he left. I I like the fact that Matt is at least getting away from the... The broken stuff for a while. it needed to take a rest. It needed to take a break. Now he's basically he's trying to start his own. You know, Taz has Team Taz. 
And now Matt is doing a similar thing. It looks like he's looking to scout beyond private party. He may want to scout singles wrestlers. He may want to scout female wrestlers. He's coming out in a suit. So I, I like that. I like the change in the character for Matt. Gives him something else to do. We had Jungle Boy. This was my uh, favorite part of the show here. Jungle Boy against Dax Harwood of FTR, Tully Blanchard, Cash Wheeler, and Luchasaurus were chained together by the wrist at ringside. Luchasaurus said that they were going to be cuffed together so that they couldn't interfere in the match. We got the Baltimore entrance. God, if YouTube would let me, I would play. Every week I would play it here on the stream. I would play, I would play Tarzan Boy here on the stream if I knew I could get away with it. Every time it comes on, I sing along to it. I won't do that here, but I sing along to it. Taz sings along to it. I did hear his commentary on AEW Dark. Well, he, he more so he hums it. He doesn't really sing the lyrics. Taz, though, is humming the song whenever Jungle Boy comes out on Dark. Just imagine when they go back out on the road with fans. I'm telling you. I'm looking forward to that. This is a very good match. This was a very good match. They gave them a lot of time, too. This thing went 15 minutes. Jungle Boy was targeting Harwood's left arm, which would play into the finish. They come back from break, and they're having a strike exchange. They're exchanging strikes back and forth. Jungle Boy gets out of multiple powerbomb attempts, hits a thrust kick. Harwood cuts him off with a lariat. Goes for a powerbomb. Jungle Boy, though, hits a Hurricane Rana. For a near fall. Harwood is setting up for a dragon suplex. Jungle Boy fights out of it. He's going after the injured arm. Again, I told you. Pay attention. Injured arm, he's going after it. Hits a series of German suplexes. Gets cut off with a back elbow. Jungle Boy, he hits a clothesline. Harwood, though, hits a DDT for a two count. These guys are pretty evenly matched here by the time we get to the end of the match. So Jungle Boy hits a crossbody. Harwood rolls through. Whole bunch of cradles back and forth and a crucifix pin only for a near fall so they're they're trading falls back and forth harwood hits a knee to the midsection rolls jungle boy up for a near fall and jungle boy kicks out he applies the snare trap which is the name of his new submission hold which is it's it's kind of like a like a deathlock crossface hybrid puts the snare trap on and harwood taps out a rare submission win here on Dynamite for Jungle Boy in what I thought was a very good showing from both these guys. Now, when the match was over, we see Tully Blanchard. He's got powder in his hand, and he throws it in Luchasaurus's face. Now, Luchasaurus is wearing a mask. I guess his eyes are exposed, but he is wearing a mask. But I'm just, I'm laughing because the whole time, and these guys at the end of the match were trying to get in. They were trying to get in before Dax tapped out but they were, they were chained, and Luchasaurus was holding them back, and they couldn't get in to save their guy. If Tully had powder the whole time, why didn't he just blind Luchasaurus five minutes earlier? They blinded him, and then they shoved him face first into the ring post. So he was down, and I don't know what happened in here. They obviously broke the chain, because the chain, they broke free somehow, and then... Wheeler got in into the ring and he's beating the hell out of Jungle Boy, but the match is already over. So if Tully had the powder, I don't know why he waited so long to use it. I thought that was a little goofy. But they get in the ring and they're attacking poor Jungle Boy. And they hit a spike pile drive. Luchasaurus eventually gets into the ring and FTR picks him up upside down. Tully Blanchard, who's got to be, what, what is he, mid 60s, maybe early 60s, but I would think Tully's probably. I'm taking, a, I'm taking a shot in the dark here, Tully Blanchard. I mean, if Sting is 61, I'm going to say Tully has got to be 64, 65. Somebody look it up on Wikipedia and tell me. Tully Blanchard climbs to the middle rope on the inside and dives off for the assisted spike pile driver. And I just, I cringed. Because, you know, Tully's part of that old guard and everyone's knees are all jacked up. I'm sure his are imperfect. But here he is coming off the ropes. And as soon as he landed on his feet, I cringed. Because I'm just conditioned to assume that all these old wrestlers have knees that are made of, of silly putty. 
But good for him, you know, ever since uh, they started bringing in some of these legends, Jake and people like that, Tully has been actually more physical than almost any of them. Arn, Tully, Tully's still in pretty good shape. You know, for a guy his age with, with the miles he probably has on his body. Wow, everybody in the chat is saying 67 years old. It's even older than I thought. Okay, Tully just turned 67 last Friday. Wow. Well, you know what? That's even more impressive. He's almost 70. That fucking guy is almost 70 years old. Coming off the middle rope on the inside. Now that's impressive. So, now, they handcuff Luchasaurus to the rope. So it's like he, you know, he's kind of dangling on the outside like this. Like he's on the cross. And Wheeler takes a pair of clippers. And he cuts off Luchasaurus's... He has, like, these little horns on his mask. They cut off the horns. Now, I'm not sure why I should give a shit about this. I mean, they cut the fucking horns off the guy's dinosaur mask. I thought they were going to cut his hair. He's got long hair. They cut the horns off the mask. Who cares? Do they give him magical fucking powers or something? He'll buy another mask. <laughs> I, again... These are some of the goofier things about the segment that I, I just kind of shook my head at. But I guess they're going to build this up like it's such a a horrible thing that these men did. They cut his horns off. You would think they stabbed him in the chest or something. They threatened to cut off Jungle Boy's hair. Even I said, no, don't do that. It's part of his gimmick. And a whole bunch of rest. Marco Stunt ran out with a chair. SCU ran out. They chased off uh, FTR and Tully. So I thought it was a good post-match angle, horns aside. And uh, even better match. Credit to Harwood as well. Got to give him a lot of credit. He's very good. But Jungle Boy needs more wins like this. This was this was a big win for him. And it's like, you know, I, I like the fact that he's incorporated a submission hold now for a finish. I think one of the things they need to start doing, and tonight was one step in that direction, is really start to separate Jungle Boy out a little bit from the rest of Jurassic Express as more of a serious wrestler. Get him away from Marco and really let him start racking up some, some wins here and there. Because I said when I did my predictions at the beginning of the year, before this year is out, I see TNT gold in Jungle Boy's future. And the only question is, who does he beat for it? I don't see him beating Darby Allen. I think Darby loses it to a heel first. And then Jungle Boy can win it from the heel. Who's the heel? I would say Miro. I could, I could see Miro being the one to take the title from Darby maybe in a few months. But Jungle Boy is going to end up with that championship. Jungle, Jungle Boy is one of those, like a Sammy, like an MJF, Wardlow, Hangman, kind of that AEW original, or, you know, you know what I mean by original. I know some of them uh, were, Hangman was elsewhere first, but he's part of that nucleus of talent who I see bigger things for outside of, of Jurassic Express. I think TNT title before the year is out. So I like this. This this was very good. This was very good. Team Taz. We had a segment out in the parking lot with Team Taz. They were responding to Sting and Darby Allen's promo from earlier in the night. And Taz started to talk. They noticed the merchandise stand. Set up outside. I don't know who the merchandise stand was set up for in the middle of this parking lot. And they were selling Sting gear. And all of a sudden, everybody, they, they start beating up the workers. Even Hook. Taz's son, Hook. Starts beating up guys. Will Hobbs is tossing guys around. Brian Cage lawn darted one of them, Kevin Nash style, into the side of the trailer that was parked there. Ricky Starks, power, or in powerbomb, but he put one of the guys... I think he gorilla pressed him and dropped him through the table. And uh, Taz said that Starks and Cage would beat Sting and Allen's ass in the street fight at Revolution. So the promo work on this show was strong. Strong promo segments. That was probably the thing I noticed the most on the show tonight. We had, uh, yeah, Silver Rules Gaming. Thank you for mentioning that. Hit that thumbs up button. I don't mention that enough. But it does help the video out. Helps the stream out. Hit that thumbs up button if you would be so kind. While you are here. Thank you, Silver. I appreciate that. Yes, Dan Brown says socially distanced merchandise. Oh, that makes sense. You gotta you gotta socially distance the merch the merch stand. 
Yeah, Hook. Yeah, I've only seen limited limited uh, things with Hook, but Hook takes after his dad with those suplexes. I, I saw the same thing on Dark. But look, if you're learning from Taz, when Taz, think about Taz in, in the old ECW, right? His whole gimmick was he was portraying this this just badass street fighter type. And if that is, I'm sure he has a hand in his son's training. I mean, he's not the only one training him, but if he's throwing punches like like uh, someone in the chat just said that look realistic and he's throwing these suplexes because he's you know, he's learning from from his dad. You gotta make, if you're gonna do it, you gotta make it look realistic. If you're gonna look like a street fighter, if you're gonna look like uh, somebody who can handle himself in a fight, you gotta make it look realistic. Britt Baker against Shanna, or as Jim Ross called her, Shana. We'll call her Shanna, though, since that's her name. Baker was in control until Shanna took her down with an enziguri. And Shanna went for a running drop kick. Rebel pulled Britt Baker out of the out of the way. And Britt Baker took advantage on the floor. They went to break. Of course they did. Picture in picture. So Rebel distracted the referee. Shanna went for a Tiger Driver. But the uh, distraction cost her. Baker put the lockjaw on for the submission win. After the match, Britt Baker, not a good curb stop. She was going for a curb stop, holding the arms back. Stomping down. You're supposed to stomp down on the head. She stomped down on her back. <laughs> so that didn't look too good, but she put her in another put her in another lock jaw until Thunder Rosa's music hit. Now it comes Thunder Rosa. And Britt Baker and Rebel, they hightail it out of there. Thunder Rosa chases after them and then gives up. They're gonna have a match next week. No way Britt Baker was losing here before the match with Thunder Rosa next week. We knew that coming in, nor should she have. We haven't seen Shanna on Dynamite, and I don't even know how long. So the outcome here was never in doubt. It was, look, it was this was solid enough. It was nice to see a different female face that we haven't seen on Dynamite recently. Uh, so it was nice to see someone else. They mentioned that Shanna had uh, relocated, I guess, full time to the U.S. Uh, is she from the U.K.? I don't know if she's from the U.K. or exactly where she's from, but I guess she's here full time now. But yeah, we saw Shanna tonight. We saw Red Velvet, who doesn't get a lot of camera time and, and I thought she did a fine little promo so that was nice MJF and Sammy Guevara I said we were going to come back to this we had a segment I don't know if they were they were in like a hotel lobby I guess somewhere and MJF was uh trying to track down Sammy he had a camera guy with him and he found Sammy at the receptionist desk and he says look I promise you last week I didn't tell Wardlow to get involved remember the match the the inner circle challenge said, I, look, I promise you, I didn't tell Wardlow to get involved. In fact, I docked his pay for what he did last week. I had nothing to do with that. And Sammy just wouldn't have any of it. He didn't believe him. He called him the best manipulator in the business. And he knows exactly what MJF is up to. MJF got real serious. And he said to Sammy, he goes, you want to you wanna play it this way? And Sammy said, I'm not playing. And MJF walked off. So I, I, building tension between these two. Sammy seems to be the only one who sees what's going on here with MJF. And he's not going to let him off the hook. And they're building tension between these two. Sammy is, is for once, not coming off as the, you know, jokey, comedic, kind of uh, sometimes comes, comes across uh, a little bit like an idiot he seems to be the only one smartened up here in this group to what MJF is trying to do. So that story is progressing as I figured it would be. Maybe they'll swerve us in the end. Maybe, maybe MJF really has come around to being a team player and he's not trying to sabotage the group from within. I think he is. I think that's the whole point of this story. Babyface Sammy against MJF is going to be amazing, says Dan Brown. I, I do think that we are headed in that direction. Certainly, we better be headed in that direction and not babyface MJF. I'm not ready for that. You got a ways to go before you get to babyface MJF. That, that would be a mistake. Main event was the Young Bucks. 
the AEW Tag Team Champions against the Good Brothers. Actually, no, with the Good Brothers. I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're not, we're not at that match yet. AEW Tag Team Champions teaming up with the Impact Tag Team Champions. Taking on the Dark Order. Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. A lot of Bullet Club mentions here during this segment, during the pre-show uh, or the pre-match promo. Apparently, it doesn't mean anything. I saw Meltzer chime in on this. He says, to his knowledge, there's no, you know, understanding or agreement of any kind with New Japan, which I think owns the IP for Bullet Club. It's just them dropping a whole bunch of Bullet Club mentions because they used to be together in Bullet Club. So it's not a sign of anything. It's not a hint of what's to come. A lot of Bullet Club mentions here on this show. Luke Gallows was mocking John Silver early in this match. The size differential. He got down on his knees to come down to his level. And John Silver was kicking his ass for a little bit. We cut to the end here. Evil Uno tags in. He goes for a neck breaker. Goes up top, though, but he whiffs on the senton. Crashes and burns. Matt Jackson tags in. He hits a double Northern Light suplex. Double clothesline on the entire Dark Order. Silver and Reynolds, they double-team Matt in the ring. Dark Order, though, hit the fatality. Good Brothers broke it up for a near fall. Nick Jackson hit super kicks on everybody. Follow that up with an Escalara dive onto the pile. Uno, Silver, and Reynolds, they were all powerbombed onto the ring apron outside simultaneously. And the uh, Bucks and the... Oh, was it the Bucks and the Good Brothers, I think? No, it was the Bucks. Hit a, a triple super kick on Grayson in the ring. Uno dove in to break up the fall. Good Brothers, they took care of Evil Uno. They got him out of the equation with the Magic Killer. And the Bucks hit the Meltzer driver on Stu Grayson for the win. Stu Grayson and John Silver both, I thought, looked really good in this match. They stood out to me. Uh, they're both really good. I mean, that's not exactly breaking news, but I thought they, they shined here in this match. But the uh, Bucks. And the Good Brothers pick up the win. Matt Jackson gets on the mic. And he talks about the Battle Royal. Coming up on Dynamite next week, there's going to be a Tag Team Battle Royal. The winners will get a Tag Team title shot against the AEW champions. The Bucks are going to be in that Battle Royal. They are the champions. And Matt explained that if they win, they get to choose their opponents. And they said, it could be anybody. Now, as they said that, they were looking at Anderson and Gallows. So they're trying to plant some kind of seed. And before anything could happen there, Ray Phoenix comes out, hits a, a springboard drop kick. They take him down. They're overwhelming him. Before they can hit the magic killer on him, he kicks out of it. He counters it. But here comes John Moxley. John Moxley comes out for the assist. Phoenix does this great dive. If you're going to do a dive, you do it the way the Phoenix did, although he almost killed himself. Like a rocket out of the ring. Hit the guardrail. But he's okay. Kenny Omega comes out, but he gets planted by John Moxley with a paradigm shift. No Pac. Pac wasn't there. That's why he did that promo that we saw earlier in the show. Uh, but I thought this was all action. You know, this main event was all action here from start to finish. Went about 10 minutes. A much improved effort from last week. I thought this was just objectively a much better show than the one they put on the week before. I thought they were pushing all the important matches for Beach Break, which is now next week. It is their big Beach Break show. Tag Team Battle Royal I just mentioned. The Wedding of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be done with this very soon. <laughs> this is almost over. Miro, the best man. We're almost there, finally. This will be over and done with. The wedding is next week. Britt Baker takes on Thunder Rosa, and Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers team up against John Moxley, Ray Phoenix, and Pac. No Penta. Penta was taken out by Omega and the Good Brothers. That's why it's Moxley teaming up with them. So that is the Beach Break lineup for next week's show. It's a uh, pretty stacked lineup. Here are the AEW poll results on Twitter for tonight. Definitely a better score than last week. 77.8% thumbs up, 22. It's like 22% uh, thumbs down is what you guys thought of the uh, show tonight. What about NXT? What do you guys think of NXT? 
little bit worse. 60.6% thumbs up, 39.4% thumbs down. That is at Solomonster, by the way. At Solomonster. At Solomonster on Twitter, you can vote. As you guys know, every week you can chime in and let your voices be heard. He said, I, who is that? Super hot in the chat. I thought the Casino Battle Royal was their version of the Royal Rumble. No, I don't, I, I know, I don't really look at it that way. I mean, I guess you can look at it that it works a little bit differently, though. People enter based on the suit, like a deck of cards, right? Aces and spades and jacks. It works a little bit, a little bit differently. So let's uh, take a look at your comments here, because we have a whole bunch of Super Chats, which are open. If you want to drop uh, some love here on the stream, I do read each and every one of them. Don't forget that Mantar one. You can find all of that stuff in the description down below. Uh, PB. Wow, PB. This this is going back probably uh, 45 minutes at this point, dropping 50 bucks here on a Wednesday night. I want. We're going to go out of the month of January with a boom. Says invest in AMC stock. GameStop stock is bananas. Yeah, I don't know what's going. I I, I try to stay out of the whole stock thing because I feel like I'm gonna get fucked. Although I do, I honestly I think WWE stock is probably a good investment, but you gotta hold on to it for a few years because it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It'll go back up. When the TV rights deals come up in a, in two or three years, believe me, it's gonna start. It's gonna climb again before it crashes. Magician Sapphire, Ray Phoenix dives always remind me of Raiden's special move from Mortal Kombat. Uh, the True Heel Master Private Party has work, uh, or has worked with the entire members of the Elite, former and current. Uh, Tony Khan loves them. Uh, they are getting the big push that they deserved. Well, look, I am grateful to have been able to call a lot of their matches in House of Glory. Uh, JD and I had the chance to call a bunch of private party matches. In fact, uh, the last independent wrestling match the Young Bucks had was against private party. And we got to call that match as well. So I got to to see them before they even got signed by AEW. And they were always over with the audience, and they were always doing these just great, spectacular moves, and just a lot of fun to watch. They're still very young. They're still very green. As, as good as they are, you would think they're only going to get better because they're still very young. They're actually, they're not that experienced. So I think their future, you know, the sky's the limit as far as their future is concerned. And now they're going to get an Impact Tag Team title match at the next pay-per-view on the 13th against the Good Brothers. So they're, you know, they're doing the thing with Matt Hardy and they're right in the mix with this whole AEW Impact thing. But uh, Private Party is, is definitely a team to watch. You know, Mark Quinn, Isaiah. Don't be surprised if, if they end up branching off eventually and having uh, pretty successful singles careers too. I think that's something that, that could uh, easily happen. Joe Olivo dropping 50 bucks of his own. Wow, holy shit, how did I miss all this? Joe, thank you. I hope Joe is still with us. Didn't get a chance to watch the show, but I got to listen to my homie on the stream. At Revolution, Shaq against Cody will be the opener, and Shaq will get beat in five minutes. Anyway, why has the card looked like crap these last two weeks? I don't think Shaq is... Oh, if Shaq is going to be on pay-per-view, I don't think Shaq is going to be opening the show. That I don't think. Thank you for the 50 spot. Jacob Donnelly, really fun show tonight. Dax and Jungle Boy tore it down. I can definitely see a TNT title run in Jungle Boy's future. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, I said that it would be this year. It might be later in the year, but I, I see it coming at some point later this year. I do think that that is what we are uh, in for. Casey is raw, says the Joe Cronin monetized this world champion is here. Casey's hitting all the streams, man. He's hitting my stream. He's hitting Joe's and who knows who else. But Casey, thank you for stopping by. Dropping two bucks. Oofman Entertainment. 
drive that DeLorean to 88 miles an hour. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the intro. Figured I would change it up a little bit this week. I do love that retro wave. I love it. True Heel Master, play Tarzan Boy for your open. Uh, dude, I would. I would do it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? We'd have a fucking karaoke sing-along every week. But YouTube would fucking hit me so fast my head would spin. <laughs> they don't. YouTube does not allow you to have fun. You've got to make your own fun. If I tried, I would get hit instantly. So believe me, I would love it. If they ever relax the rules, we can have some real fun on these streams. Even more than we already do. Uh, pillow v. Pillow. Ryan Nemeth spat his gum in my face at a bar wrestling show. I have not forgotten. Well, it sounds like Ryan Nemeth has a uh, an opponent waiting in the wings in uh, Pillow v. Pillow. Jared M, $45 super chat. Holy shnikey. Jared, thank you. Just sent Jared an email the other day, actually. He sent me a question. I emailed him back. Jared, thank you, man. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Ian Israel with the two bucks. Jungle Boy and Dax did the damn thing. Hey, there were a bunch of AEW people who said they really wanted people to see this match tonight. They were really hyping it up, and it delivered. You know, it's rare that you get a match in the middle of the show, like a mid-card match like that, that goes as long as that one went. I mean, I clocked it at 15 minutes on my phone. That's a long time. You know, for something other than the main event or a title match, that's a long time. Uh, powerful one. Top five Rumble matches after the 92 Royal Rumble. I think when I did my history segment last week, I mentioned the 2001 Royal Rumble is is up there. It, it could be number two. I, I would say, I don't want to rank them. I would say the 2001 Rumble is definitely on the list. I liked the 2005 Royal Rumble. Not everybody is a fan of that. That's the one where Cena and Batista ended up going out at the same time and Vince tore both quads. Uh, one on camera, one backstage. But I really like that one. I, that would be high on my list, too. The uh, 2005 Royal Rumble match. Uh, the other ones, I, I have to think about that. Uh, a lot of them just kind of blend together. But uh, those are the ones that stand out to me. If you put me on the spot, wanted me to give you an answer. Oh, Jolly Burgos. Hugh White, the show tonight. Love AEW showing the diversity of their roster, really showing the evolution of the wrestling world. Uh, Rodimus Prime with the 20 bucks. What's going on, Rodimus? Thought the show was good, better than last week. Food Hive, late to the party, but so was TNT's connection. Yeah, no shit. TNT was working heel tonight, but great show, nice rebound. I, I don't know if it was a TNT issue, sending the feed out to certain services because again other people were watching it just fine so my my gut tells me it was youtube tv but then again they, people on hulu were having issues as well so it was more than just youtube tv uh level 20 with the five bucks i thought retribution was taking over for the beginning of the show by the way the full archer and kingston match is on aew's youtube all right so it sounds like they may have uploaded it I will have to go back and check that out. Paul Heyman dropping some super chat love. AEW should do an intergender tag team between Britt Baker and Sean Spears so that we can get Britney Spears. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul Heyman. Chris Quillman. Yeah, 20 bucks. I feel your pain with YouTube TV. Pretty sure Eddie Kingston turned into Soundwave. You know what? This would be a great opportunity for me to go ahead and let you guys know that you can get your, uh, your discount using the Fubo code, which is still valid. It is still active. FuboTV.com slash Solomonster. There you go, all you YouTube TV folks out there. I've used Fubo, so I know how it works. I know it's a good service, but uh, we have a few different ones. Fubo, especially because, again, my brother is a Knicks fan. I don't know why, but he is. 
can't get MSG Network on YouTube TV, so we get it with Fubo. And uh, when you use the link, you help out the show, you help the brother out. So there you go, FuboTV.com slash Solomonster. You can get yourself a nice discount using our code. Had to throw that cheap plug in there. Chris says, uh, who you got winning the Tag Team Battle Royal? Plus, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on the WWE Network uh, going to Peacock on Sunday. I'm going to get into the whole thing on the podcast, episode 689 on Sunday. I don't know, the Tag Team Battle Royal, I mean, the Bucks were really putting over the idea that if they win, they get to pick their opponent, and I, there's no obvious team that stands out to me. I, I was going to say the Lucha Bros. I'm not even sure that they're in it. I, I mean, I guess they're not in it, because Phoenix is in the main event, and Penta is doing the uh, the whole injury angle. I'll go with the Bucks. Honestly, I don't have the graphic in front of me that showed all the teams that are in there. I guess uh, MJF and Jericho, are they in there? Because they're they're sort of the designated inner circle team. But then you're kind of getting, I don't know, it, it almost feels heel versus heel in a way. If I'll tell you what, if they're in it, I would say Jericho and MJF. But I just don't have the roster uh, of talent in the Battle Royal in front of me right now. Quintus Brown with the six bucks. I can see Sammy against MJF at Revolution with Jericho as the referee. Loser gets kicked out of the inner circle. Very good. I can see that. Uh, True Heel Master. Remember Hulk Hogan was so tan in WCW, he looked like a sausage with all that muscle and tanning. Well, I, used to, I call him the Orange Goblin. That's, I mean, that's the nickname a lot of people have for him. Hogan was and still is the Orange Goblin because... He was especially back in the eighties. I mean, when you would see him, he was he was orange. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. He would tan so much that he was orange. Now, was that a legitimate tan, or was he using some kind of tanning spray back then? Maybe a combination of both. I mean, remember, he he was a a Venice Beach boy. So all those uh, California once he moved out there. So all those California guys, they were always out in the sun on the beach. Khalid Adams says, can't wait for Riho against Serena Deeb. Yeah, that is in that women's title uh, eliminator that they're going to be doing. Is that match next week? I don't remember if they mentioned when that match would be. But yeah, Riho is back. Riho has been gone. Riho is now back or coming back to the U.S. And uh, she will be part of that eliminator. Nayef Alsafar, thank you for the $10 drop, sir. Nayef is uh, one of our loyalists. He keeps the show going, so Nayef, I thank you. Joe Olivo dropping another 20 bucks. Man, Joe, you are a beast tonight. Just saw highlights of Jungle Boy against Dax on Dark Order against the Elite. Uh, best two matches of the night. Yeah, I'd go Jungle Boy over the main event, though. Uh, Food Hive. In my culture, the stirring the pot means that we're cooking. Like we're in the zone. In your culture? You could have just said to me, okay, here's what it means. Am I not allowed to do the stirring motion? Is that is that what you mean? Yes, I know what it means. I I once I started seeing Angelo Dawkins do it a few years ago, I legitimately didn't know where he got it from. I thought maybe he was just like I said, I thought it was I said he should be coming to the ring in a chef hat because that could have been his new gimmick. Comes to, he comes down to the ring and he's mixing the flour and he's baking a cake. Yes, I I I know what it means. Every, every, how about this? Every week when I start my stream, just to show you guys that I'm ready and I'm in the zone, I'll do the same thing. I'll do the stirring motion. True Heel Master, I would love to see Charles Barkley joining the Nightmare family to piss off Shaq on the NBA TNT show. Adds fuel to the storyline. I disagree. I think it just turns it into a joke. I do love, I, I don't even watch a lot of the NBA, but I love the banter between Shaq and, and, and Barkley, but then you're just turning it into a joke, I think, if you do that. You want to at least try to have it come off with some level of seriousness. Uh, DGMC. Cody against Shaq in a body slam challenge. Book it. Uh, Ryan says, Speedball Mike Bailey's ban is up in late March. Is it late March? Okay. All right. I, I For some reason, I thought it was. it still maybe had a couple of years left on it. 
Uh, DGMC again, Matt Hardy's gimmick, shady record producer. Flamethrower Fluff Salisbury. I love the crowd singing the song for the entire match. And uh, Food Hive. After our talk about movies last week, I made the mistake of watching Ready to Rumble for the first time as an adult. Oh my God, the movie is terrible. Well, if you would have asked me, I could have told you that. So, I have not seen Ready to Rumble in probably 15 years. I have no interest in seeing it. Uh, let's see. See Moonsault. It's the Dragon Master. I remember listening to your podcast on my AirPods when I got my... <laughs> when he... Okay. Well, hey, congratulations, man. Hey, whatever makes you happy. You would enjoy John Moxley's promo at the beginning of the show when he was talking about having sex in the morning. Powerful one, Solomonster or Luigi? Who has the better death stare? Oh, Luigi. Luigi for sure. And Andrew Pollard in the UK. So the first time I've been able to watch live. Worst 10, 80s Hogan or present day Pete Dunn? Uh, keep on, keep on keeping on. Thanks as always for the awesome content, brother. Worst 10 has got to be Pete Dunn. Hogan made it work. Hogan just, he looked fine. I mean, he looked ridiculous, but he, the, the tan, like when you see these guys on TV now, the Miz is the worst. You'll see the Miz on TV and you could tell that these guys have had their tanning treatment before they come out. Part, half their body is orange and then their hands and other parts of their body are pale white. Why even bother at that point? It, it looks horrible or it runs. I think I've seen that with Pete Dunne. Hogan never had that problem. Hogan was just orange from head to toe. I never looked at Hulk Hogan and said, oh, his, his tanner is running, brother. He was, I think he was born orange. He was born orange with a ring around his head, balding. I think that's how he came out of the womb. With a guitar in his hand, right? He used to play guitar when he was in school. <laughs> Hogan, has, Hogan has always been orange. So, Pete Dunn definitely uh, has it worse than he does. We got more Super Chats coming in. I love it. I love it. Let's read these off here. Who we got? Who we got? Paul Heyman again? We got Paul Heyman. What are your thoughts on Taya on her way to WWE? You think WWE would put her together with John Morrison like the Lucha Underground days? Well, is that confirmed? That's my first question. Are you suggesting that she might be on her way, or have you heard that she is on her way? Because I've heard, I'm pretty sure she's going to end up there, but I have not seen confirmation of that one way or the other. I think that if she comes to WWE, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't link her up with John Morrison. Why not? If they were entertaining together enough in Lucha Underground, personalities can play off each other well be a trio with her and Miz and Morrison. Juan Ocampo, my uh, friends with benefits, thinks that you're cute. We got to fight now. It took me a few seconds to, to realize what FW... I'm like, okay, FWB. I'm going to my memory bank. FWB. Ah, yes. Okay. Now, if it's not, if that's not what that means, and you're talking about something else, then I'm going to look like a shithead here, so. <laughs> Juan Ocampo. Paul Hamilton dropping $50 on the stream. The Portland pop star is here with us tonight live on YouTube. That's worth some confetti. That's the third $50 super chat tonight. I love me some confetti. Paul, what's going on, man? What is going on, Paul? Jungle Boy's entrance, he says, equals money. I've been saying it for weeks. I've been saying it ever since Tony Khan bought the music for him as a Christmas gift. Now we just got to wait. We just got to wait now for a packed crowd, man. It's going to be bigger than all that uh, Judas stuff when Jericho comes out. Uh, True Hill Master, Powerhouse Hobbs' facial expressions are great. He's the, he's on the uh, latest... AEW Uncensored podcast. They just uploaded the video version. 
uh, to YouTube. I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't finish it, but I talked about him on the podcast on Sunday because he made some comments about WWE. When WWE, he had a tryout a few years ago, had a, a match against Baron Corbin, a dark match. They weren't interested. They said they had nothing for him at the time. So he starts working with AEW, and he's making appearances on Dark. And all of a sudden, WWE comes calling and says, hey, we want to talk. And he basically, I don't know if, if he used these exact words, uh, but basically he told WWE to fuck off. He didn't like the idea that the only reason you're coming for me is because you want to take me away from them. If you actually want me, then say so. And if you don't, yeah, he's, he's a very, he wants honesty. He doesn't like people who aren't just straight to the point and honest with him. So he was very upset when WWE contacted him because it was very, I mean, it was transparent as all hell why they were reaching out to him. Ricky Starks had a similar story. The day that he had his match on Dynamite with Cody, he got a phone call from WWE. Hey, let's talk. We want to sign you. Well, what happened all the other months that you didn't want to sign him? You see him on Dynamite or he's advertised that night for Dynamite. All of a sudden, you're going to call the guy on the phone. Hey, we're interested in having a conversation. Oh, yeah? Fuck you. I don't know that I would say that to them, but I'd be thinking the exact same thing. Fuck off. Now you want me? Or do you want me so you can stockpile me and take me away from anybody else? This is what they do. This is what they do. They stockpile people. They have so many people that they don't know what to do with them. And so a lot of them end up getting lost in the shuffle. And, you know, if, if they're on the independent scene, kind of uh, creating a buzz, they lose a lot of that momentum. And you almost forget the WWE even has some of these people under contract. Anyway, the, the Hobbs interview, it's up on their YouTube channel. Uh, Food Hive says, did you get to anything on your watch list? Um... Here it is, Murderhawk. If done right, Jungle Boy is 2021's breakout star. He's one of them. I, I wouldn't say that he is the breakout star of the year, but I would say the potential is definitely there for him to be one of the breakout stars of the year. Uh, but did I get to anything on my watch list? I don't think I did. No, not in the last week. Uh, work has work has been uh, it's been very busy this week. I've been really down. Just too much. There's too much going on. I don't have enough time to do all the stuff I want to do. More content. All the ideas I have. More content for the channel. It January has been a very it's been a very shitty month. Everything is down. I mean, I I, I that that seems to be the thing every January. It seems to kind of be that way. You wouldn't think so, though, heading into the Royal Rumble and everything, but I don't know. Not enough time to do all the things I want to do. I, I will get to that, though. I will get to that. You know, it's, uh, you got to find that happy medium of, of juggling one job with the other. It's two full-time jobs. <laughs> you figure, oh, it's a piece of cake. I, I can do that, right? I can, I can juggle both of them until you actually try to juggle both of them, and then you realize that you can't get to all the shit that you want to do. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff on my watch list I want to get to. Including uh, some of the stuff we talked about, including Joker and all that good stuff. Uh, here we go. EJ. EJ with the five bucks. Let's see what he says. I watched the 92 and 2000 Rumble yesterday. I watched the 97 and 98 today. And I'm watching the 01 and 05 Rumble tomorrow. Am I missing any? I think you got all the key ones pretty much covered right there. I would say... Hmm. Now, are you talking pay-per-views or are you talking just the Rumble matches? I would say if you want to throw one more on... You're watching the 01 tomorrow. I don't know. I think two, 2002. 2002, I think, was up to that point the longest rumble. 
it went like 67 or 68 minutes. It, it might still be the longest rumble. I don't know. They had a 40-man rumble in 2011. I would have to think that was longer. Uh, that's the one that Alberto Del Dipshit won. But in 2002, Mr. Perfect came back in that rumble. There were a few cameos, I think. Rikishi came back. Uh, that, that wasn't a bad one. Oh, Maven got obliterated. Maven eliminated The Undertaker in that one, and then he got just absolutely destroyed with an unprotected chair shot right, right to the dome. I definitely remember that one. But you know what? That, that Undertaker elimination that year when Maven got rid of him and the reaction to it is one of the, it's one of the best moments in Rumble history because people just were shocked. They didn't see it coming. But boy, did Maven get a receipt for that one. Undertaker, he, he gave Maven his moment, but he gave him a receipt. I don't know if it was worth it. Paul Heyman, John Morrison looked terrible on Raw this week. I, I got to tell you, Raw, I'll, I'll get into it more tomorrow when I talk about the Rumble. Raw, Raw this week looked terrible. I won't even single out John Morrison. That show, that was the worst go-home episode of Raw to a Royal Rumble pay-per-view that I think they've ever done. Absolutely dreadful. How anybody could watch that show on Monday night and be more excited to see the Royal Rumble. This is a show that is just going to sell itself. If you are a fan of the Royal Rumble, and I look forward to the Rumble every year, as I have since I was a kid. It's always fun to look forward to the Rumble. You never know how it's going to turn out. So I, I look forward to the Rumble just because it's the Rumble. If I relied on their television show to get me excited for the Rumble, especially that television show on Monday night, I wouldn't even watch the goddamn show. That was horrendous. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman right now and all the stuff that they're involved in going on on the SmackDown brand and some of the other SmackDown stuff, that is carrying this company right now. You take that stuff away, and I, I don't even, I shudder to think what the big top angle right now on TV would be. Drew and Goldberg? I mean, that's horrible. So I'm going to get into that tomorrow night. Uh, I will be live on YouTube again. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. I hope you guys will join me there. That's the perfect super chat. Look at that. Seth Rollins. That was me watching Raw Monday night. Look at that. All that stuff that was coming up. All that bile. I see some peas and carrots. Then they're on the floor. Look at that. It's disgusting. That was me on Monday night watching that show. Awful. Awful. But that will not be you tomorrow night watching me. 9 p.m. Right back here. Live on YouTube. I'm going to run down the entire Royal Rumble card. From top to bottom. I'm not waiting for SmackDown on Friday night. I'm not doing it. There could be more matches added. Possible. WWE Backstage is coming back for one night only on Saturday night. They're giving away the number 30 entrance in the Rumble. They're giving away who the first two entrants are in the Women's Rumble. I think that's incredibly dumb. I guess they feel they have to give people something to watch, you know, something to tune in for on FS1. I hate when they do that. I mean, why can't... The part of the appeal of the Rumble is just not knowing who's coming out when. So they're giving all that away on Saturday night, but I pretty much have everything set. We know what the card is. I got my predictions locked in. I think I know exactly what's going down. And so join me tomorrow night. I'm not leaving yet. I just want you guys to be aware of that. It'll be talking Royal Rumble, all the good, the bad, and the ugly, heading into this pay-per-view on Sunday. Let's see. Uh, the True Heel Master. Do you see AEW traveling back uh, on the road, allowing people who are vaccinated back in the buildings? I don't know how that's going to work. You know, they're not going back on the road anytime soon. I don't think any of these companies are going back on the road until the summer, at the earliest. And once they start doing that, I don't know if there's going to be some kind of vaccination passport, because you're going to have people who just don't want to get vaccinated. So do they have a system in place where you have to prove that you have been vaccinated before they will allow you into the building? 
it sounds cumbersome. How are they going to get a system like that set up? Because you know you'll have people who are going to try to forge it. I don't know. They're going to have. They're they're probably thinking about that right now. But in terms of getting back on the road, I don't I don't see it. I don't see it at least until the summer. Cerise Manson says, uh, "Hi, Jason. What's your thoughts on Chael Sonnen? I think Chael Sonnen has a big mouth. I think he." He's a great talker. I think that he's got the perfect personality for pro wrestling. If he ever wanted to get into pro wrestling, I think he would have made a great manager, even not just a wrestler, but a great heel manager. Uh, EJ, I really liked the 2002 Rumble when I was younger. 2004 was my favorite, other than 92, and I still like it, but it's hard to watch because of Benoit. Even before all the Benoit stuff, you know, it, it was a nice finish with him and the big show kind of dangling on the rope and the big dramatic fall out of the ring. I was never really a fan of that Rumble, even before he did all that stuff. It, it, was, it was not one of my favorites. Uh, Juan was CM Punk trolling the company with his tweet. CM Punk always trolls. He was celebrating his anniversary. It was the anniversary today of CM Punk's walkout on WWE seven years ago today. You know I'm going to talk about that on Sunday. It's hard to believe he's been gone for seven years. Bret Hart, after Montreal, he didn't show up on Raw for 12 years. Seven years. He's, give it a few more years, he's closing in on Bret Hart numbers. I think most people would have predicted he would have been back by now. He's open to talking. He has said it. He's not closing the door on a possible return to WWE at some point. He, he sounds more open to the idea now than he ever has before. But how badly does he really want to go back? I don't get the sense he's dying to go back. And for Punk to go back at a time when there's no people in the building it just seems completely stupid to me. So, no... To answer that question, I don't see a surprise CM Punk cameo at the Royal Rumble on Sunday. Before anybody, because you know somebody's going to ask the question. The answer is no. Ashway with the six bucks. Uh, as always, you are the man. Do you think the 92 Royal Rumble is the most star-studded Rumble ever? It was. Uh, for sure it was for a long, long time. They've had other Rumbles over the years that have had a lot of people in there. Even 2001. Uh, it really is generational, though. So in 92, you had you had guys in there like Shawn Michaels, who wasn't really a big star yet. But you had Flair and Hogan and Savage and Slaughter and DiBiase. Kerry Von Erich, who was a bigger star outside of WWE. Undertaker, even then, was a big star. He would go on to become even bigger. Uh, Piper. Jake. For my money, Sid. For my money... The 92 Rumble, as a fan of that era, and obviously all the eras that came after, the 92 Rumble is the most star-studded Rumble they've ever had. But if you're a newer fan or you didn't watch the 92 Rumble, maybe you watched from the late 90s onward, I think 2001, maybe even 2002, because then you had Austin, Angle, Rock, Triple H, uh, Undertaker, I think it really, a lot of it really just depends on what era you grew up in and who you considered to be the biggest, the biggest stars, the biggest names. My answer is yes. I would say the 92 was. Uh, Quintus Brown, Heenan on, I love all the 92 Rumble questions we're getting here. Quintus says Heenan on commentary uh, really made the 92 Rumble the best one ever. I'm telling you, man, you know, people, people, are going to have their favorites, and that's fine. Some people get upset when I say that uh, 92 was the greatest of all time. And uh, I love it. I love their salty tears. But part of what made the 92 Rumble so great, it's not just the Rumble itself. It was the match. It was the story around the match with Flair entering at number three, Heenan freaking out on commentary. Heenan was as much a part of that as anything. If you take Heenan away, I still I still love the 92 Rumble, but not as much. Heenan and Monsoon together on commentary, the best commentary team of all time. That that doesn't hurt. 
it was it was just a total package. It was the story around the match. It was every time Flair would be out of trouble, somebody else would come over to him, whether it was Piper or whether it was uh I think Kerry Von Erich was going after him at one point and and he couldn't get away. No matter what he did. He had all these little side stories, Macho Man and Jake. Piper just won the IC title earlier in the show. He was trying to become only the second double champion ever after the Warrior. He could have left with both belts that night. It was everything just it fell into place. And on top of that, you had the title on the line, which had never happened before. And it didn't happen again after that until 2016 that you had a Royal Rumble match where the championship was on the line. So it was all of it, the whole thing coming together. It was the perfect set of circumstances. As Jared in the chat, it's a very good way to put it. Jared said, Heenan provided the perfect soundtrack. That's, that's, a, that's exactly a bang on way of, of describing it. He was the perfect soundtrack for that match. I mean, Heenan was the soundtrack of my childhood. He wasn't just the soundtrack of that match. I think uh, Heenan and Monsoon both were the soundtrack for a lot of people's childhood who grew up on WWF wrestling in the Northeast. If you grew up on, you know, world class, if you lived down in, uh, in Texas, then that was your thing. If you were in the Carolinas, then the NWA was probably your thing. This is going back to the territory day. I was a Northeast guy, so I watched WWE. And in the early 90s, I started to be exposed to the NWA more. Everyone, everyone's got their stories. But if you didn't grow up during that era, if you're like a newer fan, man. I, feel, I really do. I feel bad for those people that really don't have any concept of, of what wrestling used to be when it was more territorial. Can never it can never really go back to that. You can try. You can try to set up te- territories, but we live in a global world now. Social media, the internet, it's it's not the same. Uh, Turtlehead, I'd like to see Think Mama Pump in AEW. Her think or thick, the Think Mama Pump. Her with or against Layla Hirsch would be cool, and Sue against Abaddon would be a sight to see. I don't know if that was a typo. I don't know. Who, who's Think Mama Pump? <laughs> I don't know who Thick Mama Pump is either, but I definitely don't know who Think Mama Pump is. You're going to have to help me out here. You are going to have to help me out. <laughs> okay, Turtlehead said Thick. Well, who's Thick Mama Pump? Yeah, Turtlehead. That was Turtlehead just made botchamania. I'm gonna send that to Matthew. You fucked up, not me. I'm just reading. I'm just reading what you sent. Jordan. Oh, Jordan Grace. Okay. All right. Is that what she calls herself? Thick Mama Pump. Uh, the True Heel Master, worst world champion in wrestling. David Arquette as WCW World Champion. Vince Russo as WCW World Champion. Or Vince McMahon as WWE champion. Well, Vince McMahon had enough sense, at least, to take the title immediately off himself. So, I mean, that was bad. That that still never should have happened, but I can't pick him. I, I, can't, I can't, in good conscience, vote for Vince McMahon. David Arquette, I mean, I don't know. I mean, at least with Arquette... I don't, I don't in any way want this to come across as if I'm justifying this, because all three should not have happened. The David Arquette one especially shouldn't have happened. Russo had no business being a champion of anything. With Russo, it just, I mean, it just felt like some guy who was being a mark and wanted to put the belt on himself. Meanwhile, he got fucked up in the process and got his bell rung and got concussed. So the answer is Russo. Russo winning that belt was worse than David Arquette. Although the David Arquette thing did drag on for a little bit. But uh, no, the the correct answer is Vince Russo. Vince Russo as a a world champion of anything. 
That is the correct answer. EJ says, I'm kind of surprised Eric Bischoff was never WCW World Champion. I'll give Eric credit. He he resisted. He put himself on TV first as a, as a character before Vince did. But he did not put a title on himself. Bro. I'm the worst world champion, bro. I'm the champion of my household, bro. All right, I think we're caught up. Hashway says it's 6 a.m., just woke up. See you tomorrow. Well, join me tomorrow night, Hashway, because well, I'm going to be uh, going live at 9 p.m., so hopefully that's probably right in the middle of the night where you are. But thank you for sticking with me, Hashway. I appreciate it. All right. Oh, Turtlehead sees Turtlehead says Bischoff sold for the bird. And it's right in TNA. Remember the bird? Oh my god. Don't take me back to those days. All right, you guys know the deal. We do a little deal here on these streams where let me bring it up here. You stop the gift twice. I'm just reading what it says here. You stop the gift twice. And when you do, that is the main event of WrestleMania. So, Let's do the deal. See what we come up with. The Rock. All right. There you go. That See, that's one half of a WrestleMania main event right there. I should just stop right here. The Rock could just come out and stand in the ring. And there's your WrestleMania main event. I usually screw these things up, though. So who, who will The Rock be facing? Let's see. Who will The Rock be facing at WrestleMania? <laughs> oh, I knew I should have quit while I was ahead. This is why I don't this is why I don't do the stock market thing. I would get in, I would have one good stock, man, I would ride it for too long and the fucking thing would crash. The Rock against Enzo Amore. Well, you know what? I'll say this. If The Rock and Enzo have a promo battle, that could be worthy of a WrestleMania main event. If they don't actually wrestle, I don't want to see Enzo Amore wrestle. But if they had some kind of verbal joust in the middle of the ring, then I actually think that that could that could work. I'm trying to I'm trying to make the most of this here. I'm trying. I'm trying. Try, I know. I know. What do you want from me? I don't have I don't have luck with this stuff. At least we got the rock though, right? At least we got the rock. Let me just make sure we're all caught up on super chats. I do read everything that you guys sent to me, and, and you guys really, where are we at tonight here? Let me see here, man. You guys really, you guys killed it with the super chats tonight. I appreciate that. This this is the best, uh, the best dynamite stream on that front that we've had in uh, in some time. Yep, looks like we're all caught up. Well, listen, guys, this has been fun. I'm glad that my uh, Dynamite stream restored so I was able to actually watch most of the show. And a better show than it was last week, for sure. Now, next week is Beach Break, so it's a big themed show, big themed episode. I expect some uh, big angles potentially could be shot next week. Hopefully, they'll have a, uh, a beach type of setting at Daly's Place. Maybe they'll have, I don't know, some kind of pool they can install or something like that. We'll see. You gotta, You got to... You know, adopt the theme in some way. They have to theme it up. So I'll be back with you for the Beach Break review next week. Uh, but you won't have to wait that long because I'm going to be live right back here with you at 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. We're going to run down the entire Royal Rumble card. I've got predictions. I've got thoughts on a few other things that we can get into. Maybe we'll take calls. We didn't uh, have time tonight. But uh, I'm sure either tomorrow night or Sunday night for the Rumble stream, we'll probably get back to. Uh, some calls so thank you guys for the support thank you for choosing me for your dynamite coverage i love each and every one of you i appreciate it and uh, have yourselves a great night go vote on twitter too at solemnoster let me know what you thought about nxt once you get a chance to watch that show as well i'm going to watch that tomorrow chime in on twitter at solemnoster and i will see you guys live tomorrow night for rumble predictions take care guys